Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. In this particular video, I will be explaining to you De novo biosynthesis of a purine ring. A purine ring until the formation of inosine monophosphate. To synthesize that inosine monophosphate, there are 13 reactions involved and 7 ATPs are used. It means a synthesis of purine ring from scratch from individual molecules, getting atoms from them and making a purine ring is a time consuming and energy consuming process. Let's see how a de novo biosynthesis of purine ring occurs. Before we get in there, so let's take a quick look at what are the donors of atoms present in a purine ring. So I have written a purine ring here. So this purine ring has got two rings together. So the numbering of purine ring, the uh, uh, atoms that are present in the purine rings can be numbered starting from uh, nitrogen 1 here. So this is the nitrogen 1 and then we have carbon 2, nitrogen 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, carbon 6, nitrogen 7, carbon 8 and nitrogen 9. So there are 9 atoms in a purine ring. And each of these atoms, they are donated by different uh, metabolic intermediates. So, the carbon-6, it is uh, donated by carbon dioxide in the form of bicarbonate. Nitrogen-1 is given by aspartate, amino acid aspartate. Carbon-2 is given by N10-formyl uh, tetrahydrofolate. N3, it will be given by uh, glutamine. And C4, C5 and N7, all these three atoms will be given by glycine. And C8 is given by N10, formyl, uh, tetrahydrofolate and N9 is given by glutamine. So these are the atoms that are uh, donating their, uh, these are the atoms that are coming from different metabolic intermediates. So it is one of the important concepts um, uh, in biochemistry that you need to know the donors of all the atoms that are uh, present in a purine ring. Just to recap, we have uh, uh, carbon nitrogen 1 coming from aspartate, carbon 2 N10 formal tetrahydrofolate, uh, nitrogen 3 is coming from glutamine, C4, C5, N7 is coming from glycine, C6 is coming from carbon dioxide, C8 is coming from N10 formal tetrahydrofolate, N9 is coming from glutamine. Let's see how this ring is synthesized. Now it all starts from ribose 5-phosphate. As you all know ribose 5-phosphate, it is coming from pentose phosphate pathway. So the ribose 5-phosphate, it will get into very first reaction to go towards a purines or pyrimidine biosynthesis. In order to do that, we need to get this PRPP. So ribose 5-phosphate is converted into PRPP here. PRPP is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. This will be going on with the use of ATP. See the ATP is converted into AMP, adenosine monophosphate. Now the two phosphates from ATP will be present here, pyrophosphate. That is what is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. So the job is done by PRPP synthetase enzyme. This is one of the regulated enzyme in uh, purine biosynthesis. So the PRPP synthetase will convert ribose 5-phosphate into PRPP. Once you get PRPP, so this PRPP, it is going to stimulate, whenever PRPP accumulates, this PRPP will have a positive effect on an enzyme called PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase. This is one of the most regulated and rate emitting enzyme in purine biosynthesis. I have a video on uh, purine biosynthesis regulation. Uh, you can take a look at that video at the end of this video so that you have a complete uh, picture about purine biosynthesis and the regulation. So the link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing at the end of this video. Anyway, so once you get PRPP here, so the phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate is converted into 5-phosphoribosylamine as it is shown in the structure there. So the 5-phosphoribosylamine formation, it will be done with the help of PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase, which is a rate limiting and highly regulated enzyme in purine biosynthesis. And also note that this particular enzyme is referred as glutamine phosphoribosyl amidotransferase. That means there are two names for this enzyme. One is 
PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase which is also called as glutamine phosphoribosyl amidotransferase what do you need to look for is look for amidotransferase here amidotransferase is amidotransferases they transfer a side chain amino group <coughs> usually from glutamine to an organic molecule that is why you can see here glutamine entering into the reaction and glutamate is going out that means side chain amino group of glutamine is transferred to PRPP that is why the name of the enzyme is PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase or glutamine phosphoribosyl amidotransferase once you get 5 phosphoribosyl amine so individual other metabolic intermediates they will don't they will get into these reactions donate their atoms and eventually will make inosine mono monophosphate so glutamine is going to give you uh, n3 uh, that is this n3 is given by glutamine now next is glycine glycine gets into the reaction and give you c4 c5 and n7 and then gets n10 formal tetrahydrofolate n10 formal tetrahydrofolate will give you ch of purine ring and then we have glutamine getting in here this glutamine will give you n3 of a purine ring and then carbon dioxide gets in that will give you C6 of a purine ring here and aspartate gets in that will give you N1 of a purine ring and N10 formal tetrahydrofolate will get in at the end and that will give you C2 of a purine ring at the end of all that there will be ring closer and that's what is the inosine monophosphate once you get inosine monophosphate inosine monophosphate gets into bifurcation reaction now the bifurcation is inosine monophosphate can go into adenosine monophosphate with the help of this enzyme adenylosuccinate synthase where is uh, aspartate getting into the reaction furthermore there is adenylosuccinase enzyme which will really remove that uh, means release aspartate as a fumarate and uh, AMP is made there uh, that is adenosine monophosphate in order to make adenosine monophosphate there must be sufficient availability of GTP there. So on the other side, inosine monophosphate can go into guanosine monophosphate with the help of IMP dehydrogenase. This IMP dehydrogenase enzyme, so which is converting inosine monophosphate into xanthosine monophosphate, and xanthosine monophosphate will be converted into guanosine monophosphate by taking the amide group nitrogen from glutamine and release it as glutamate done by transaminidase enzyme or transaminidase enzyme and during this process you need uh, GTP here sorry ATP here so for inosine conversion into AMP adenosine monophosphate you need a GTP done by adenylosuccinate synthase from inosine monophosphate into guanosine monophosphate you need a ATP which is done by which is initiated by IMP dehydrogenase enzyme Further, it is catalyzed by transamidase enzyme. So, with the help of all these enzymes, especially the four important enzymes, which are regulatory enzymes in purine biosynthesis, one is PRPP synthetase, PRPP glutamyl amidotransferase, adenylosuccinate synthase, and IMP dehydrogenase. So, this is how uh, two purine nucleotides are synthesized here, and that is uh, adenosine monophosphate, that is coming from adenine there, and guanosine monophosphate. So this is what is a purine nucleotide biosynthesis uh, which is uh, referred as a de novo biosynthesis of purine nucleotides. I hope this video has helped you in understanding what all the important reactions in, uh, in de novo biosynthesis of purines. Regulation of purine nucleotides synthesis it is there in the upcoming video which is coming up right now after this particular uh, presentation. Also the link is there in the description. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in my next video.